What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender animation tutorial for you. So in today's video I thought it would be kind of fun to download a Mixamo character and add an animation that basically simulates them using some kind of like magical power to throw an object against a wall and then breaking it. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so first off, let's go ahead and let's download a free character from Mixamo. So Mixamo is a website where you can basically download all of these animated characters and um, bring them into your scenes for free. And so I made a video about the add-on for this before, but in this case what I'm going to do, because I've used the ninja model before I know that it's going to work, so we're going to go ahead and start with that. So we're just going to click on the ninja right here and then what I want to do is I want to find an animation that's basically him like using some kind of magical power or something in order to pick something up. So what we want to do is we've got the ninja right here. We're just going to click on find animations and I'm just going to search for spell, S-P-E-L-L. -L. And so what I actually want to do is I want to select this option for the magic spell pack that's in here because basically the magic spell pack contains a number of different spell movements in here and I want to download all of those. So we're just going to click in here and that's going to load these onto our character. So now you can see those actually like showing up inside of the scenes. You can kind of preview that movement. And you can see how those first two are the animations that we really want where he like picks something up right here and then he pushes his arm forward like he's throwing something. So we could also download those individually but we're going to use this just as is. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button for download and we're going to select the FBX binary. Um, we're going to go 30 frames per second is fine. Pose, we can just leave on T-Pose for right now. And we're not going to do anything with keyframe reduction. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button for download. And what that's going to do is that's going to download this file so that we can bring it into Blender. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to import that model file into Blender. So I'm just going to do a file, import. We're going to find an FBX and we're going to select the large model that's in here, which is our ninja file. So we're just going to select this. We're going to leave all of this as is for right now. We're just going to click on import FBX. And so what that's going to do is that's going to import that model file right here. So we're going to move Bonnie out of the way. So we'll just move her over here. She can just observe what we're doing over here. And so notice how if I click play in here, nothing is happening right now. So there's no animations applied to this model. It's basically just a model here. And then there's also an armature that's inside of the model. So the first thing we need to do is we need to use the Mixamo add-on for Blender. I will link to a video about setting that up. We're not going to get too far into that right now, but I will link to the video both about setting that up and also to the newest version on the Mixamo website. This is a free add-on. But what we want to do is we want to click in here and we want to click on the button for create control rig. So we want to select the armature and then click on create control rig. Don't select your model because it's going to be grayed out. You want to select the armature right here. So we're just going to click on the button for create control rig and we're going to go ahead and click on OK. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a rig that you can now move around in pose mode. So for example, you can move the arm around if you decide that you want to do that. So you can move the upper torso around, all those different things. So now we have a control rig in here. Well now, what we need to do, because we don't want to animate the, out the movement ourselves, right? We want to use those professionally done ones in Mixamo. So we're just going to import. So we're going to do a file, import, FBX. But this time, we want to select the option for, um, we might do the standing 1H cast spell. So basically these are the FBX files that contain the movements um, that go with the rigs. So I'm just going to select this, click on import FBX. And so notice how if I click play in here, what this is going to do is this is going to bring in the rig that's associated with that movement. So right now, I've got a character file in here, and then I've got a rig in here as well. So what we want to do is we want to select this rig that was created, and we want to set the option for source skeleton. And in this case, what we want is we want the source skeleton to be this armature 01. So we're just going to click on the little button right here, and we're just going to look for armature 001. And so what we want to do is we want to click on the button for apply animation to control rig. So when we do that, 
notice what that does is that takes that animation right here and it actually applies it to the rig associated with our model. So now if I click on play, notice how he's making this movement right here. So from keyframe zero to about keyframe 70, he's doing the movement associated with him doing that spell. So we've got that in here. Now what we wanna do is we wanna add another animation. Um, what we're gonna do in order to do that is we're just gonna file, import again, and we're gonna find our second animation, which in this case is just gonna be the standing magic attack. So I'm just gonna double click on that to bring that in. I'll notice how now there's another rig in here that does the magic attack. All right, so now notice how we have two animations in here, right? We have the one that's currently applied to our overall rig, and then we have the second one going at the same time. Well, what I want is I want the second one to start at like keyframe 64, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I have my second armature selected. I'm gonna select this. I'm just gonna drag these across so that they start at keyframe 64. So now you can see how this first animation is moving. And then the second animation happens right here. Now, this is one thing I'm not 100% sure. There's probably a smarter way to do this. But what I don't want to do right now is I don't want to go back into my object and then adjust the source skeleton to 002 and just do the same thing. Because if we do that, right, if I click in here and I click on apply animation to control rig, what that's going to do is that's going to wipe out the original animation that was in here. Now I'm sure there's a way to store these animations in here. I don't know what it is. So if you guys do know what it is, let me know. But what I wanna do is I wanna select the keyframes associated with this first movement and I'm just gonna select them. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy them. Then I'm gonna jump over to this rig and I wanna set my source skeleton to armature zero two I don't want to click on apply animation to control rig. What that does is that applies this animation to this control rig right here. But notice how it wiped out my original animation. Well, all I'm going to do is just set my keyframe back to zero, right click and click on paste. So now I've got all of these animation movements in here associated with this. So if I was to turn these armatures off in here, and I was to turn off the uh, the control rig stuff and click the play button, what I've got is I've got this ninja that's now animated to do this spell where he's like picking something up, making it fly, and then pushing it forward like this. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Now let's add the object that we want him to throw and something for it to break against. So I'm going to start. I'm just going to add a plane. I'm going to scale it way up. We'll apply our rotation and scale. I'm also going to create a cube and we'll just scale it out. We'll scale it on the Y axis a little bit so that it doesn't look quite so funky. And then we'll just do an apply rotation and scale again. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a simple plate shape. So what we're gonna do to do that is I'm just gonna do a shift right click, shift A, and I'm just gonna add a cylinder like this. And I'm just gonna go into side mode right here. I'm just gonna scale it down. We'll do an S shift Z so we can scale it on every axis, axis, axis except the Z axis. Then I'm just gonna tab in here, go to wireframe mode. And I'm just gonna use this in order to create a very, very simple plate. So I'm just gonna extrude this up, scale it out. Extrude it up, scale it out. So something very simple like this. Then we'll go back into solid mode and I'll make sure that I put this above the ground. And then we're also gonna make sure that the scale looks correct. One other thing I might do is apply a different material to the ground, maybe like a gray material, just so that we can kind of see what we've got going on here. And we'll apply maybe more of a black material to our wall. So now we've got this ninja in here and we've got this plate that we've created. And so what I want is I want him to kind of levitate the plate up and then I want him to throw it at the wall. So we're gonna use a combination of animations and physics in order to simulate this. So 
First thing we want to do, again, make sure that we've applied our rotation and scale. But then we want to start keyframing its movements. So at keyframe zero, I want this to be sitting on the ground. All right, so I'm just going to move this so that it's on the ground. And I'm going to tap the I key to insert a keyframe. I want to make sure that keyframe is at zero right here. Well, then what I want is I want the plate to move up when he moves his hand up, right? So let's say at keyframe, maybe like 35, I want this to be up in the air like this. So I'm just going to use the move tool and tap the I key in order to set that up. Now we've got this plate in here that kind of levitates when he lifts this up. All right, so now it's kind of floating in the air here. One thing we may talk about, and this is probably gonna be a future video because this thing's getting a little bit long, we may talk about doing a little bit of like noise to this movement so that this floats around a little bit more. For now, I'm just gonna leave this plate as is right here. So I've got a plate like this that's now levitating. And then what we're gonna do, so we're gonna set another keyframe at 60 right here. And then when he moves his hand back, I want this plate to move back a little bit. So I'm gonna set it so it moves back on the Y axis right here. And I'm gonna tap the I key to insert another keyframe. So now we've got this plate that kind of moves back. And then we want this object to move forward, but I don't wanna animate it just like manually moving forward. What I wanna do instead is I wanna use physics in order to push it forward so that this looks like it's actually like a flown object. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the physics settings right here, and we're going to do a couple different things. So first off, we're gonna set this object so that it's a rigid body. So we're gonna click on rigid body right here. All right, so now we've got a little bit of a problem if we reset our system, right? Because if we click back here and then click on play, remember how we had keyframe the movement before? Well now, since we added rigid body physics to this, it's not going to follow the keyframes anymore. So what we need to do is we need to let this know when we want the actual object to be controlled by the physics system. So there's a checkbox over here that allows this to be controlled by the animation system. So what we need to do is we need to set this so that up to this point right here, the plate is actually being animated by the system. And then beyond this point, we want it to be controlled by the physics system. Well, we can keyframe this. So at keyframe 79, what I want is I want this to be animated, right? Notice how as soon as I check that, this goes back to where the keyframe was. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna click on this button right here to animate the property. That's gonna set a keyframe where at keyframe 79, this is being animated. So you can see how that box is now checked from keyframe zero to keyframe 79. Well, at keyframe 80, what we want is we want this to start being controlled by the physics system. So we're gonna uncheck the box right here and we're gonna keyframe this. So now keyframe 79, it's animated. Keyframe 80, it's no longer animated. So then if I reset this whole thing and play it, notice how this is gonna get picked up, up to keyframe 79, then it's gonna drop out of my scene, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want because we know that it means that the physics system is working. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna use a force in order to push this object forward. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna add, it, I wanna add an object that's gonna apply wind to this. So it's gonna blow it in this direction. There's other ways you can do this too. I'm gonna use the wind just because it's fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna do a shift A. I'm just gonna add an empty. I'm just gonna make it my plane axes right here. And I'm just gonna move it so that it's behind my plate. And what I wanna do at my empty is I wanna add a force field right here. And in this case, I'm just gonna go with the wind function right here. I'm just gonna rotate my object along the X axis so that it's blowing this direction right here. And so probably what I wanna do is I don't want it messing with things in my scene up until this point. So at keyframe 79, I want the strength of the wind to be zero right here. I'm just gonna keyframe that. So basically what that means is that means that it, um, at keyframe 79, there's no force coming off of this. And then at keyframe 80, I'm gonna add a strength of like 100. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keyframe this 
right here. Well, notice what that's gonna do inside of your simulation is that's gonna apply a force to your plate. So I'm just gonna click on the play button right here. Notice how right now it's just kind of floating there. But at this point, notice how you're getting a little bit of forward movement from our plate, right? Not a ton. So we're just gonna take this value. We're gonna bump it up to something like 10,000. And I'm gonna reset my keyframe. We're gonna re rerun this. And so what we should get now is we should get some forward movement from our plate like this, right? So notice how as soon as we did that, the plate gets moved forward. But we have another problem, which is the plate is like falling through everything, right? Which we don't necessarily want. So what we can do to fix that is we can just come in here and we can just set our wall and our floor to be rigid bodies as well. So we're just gonna click on our floor, set this to be a rigid body passive, and we're gonna set this to be a rigid body passive. So now if we run this simulation, what's gonna happen is this plate's gonna move up at this keyframe, the force is gonna to apply to it and the plate's actually going to like blow inside of our scene. So it's gonna go forward into our wall. So you can kind of see where it does that right here. All right, so we're just gonna play around with this a little bit. One thing that I'm noticing is this blows the object into the wall, but then the force is so strong that it kind of like stands it back up. So what we might do is we might just go until maybe like this frame right here and then set our strength. Maybe we'll keyframe the 10,000 here, and then at frame 91, we'll set our strength back to zero right here. So what I've got is I've got the strength going from zero to really strong, and then back to zero, so that it's not gonna stand our plate up against the wall. So see how it kind of bounces off the wall? right there, that's what we want. So if you guys are interested, I can do another video where I kind of break the plate up into different pieces and it actually shatters when it hits the wall. Um, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'll probably break that into the second piece, but we would probably use something like the add-on RBD lab in order to do that. But you can use this in order to simulate a character using like magic powers or something like that inside of Blender. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials like this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, so make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.